Good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, I'm Abhinav, and uh, I'm from Infinera. Uh, I also have Sharfuddin uh, from Infinera as well. So uh, this work uh, is uh, was a joint effort between uh, Infinera and uh, Energy Sciences Network at uh, Berkeley. And uh, what we're going to, what I'm going to talk about today is um, how some of these SDN methodologies can apply to uh, transport networks. So. Uh, Let's look at a typical scenario uh, of how uh, networks are set up today. So you have, for example, if you consider a data center uh, network, uh, you have multiple stacks of things uh, going on. So you have some uh, switches inside the data centers which are doing uh, aggregation from tap top of rack switches. And then all of these are probably feeding into a edge router uh, and then uh, the inter data center connectivity is achieved through uh, these large capacity uh, router links uh, going over the wide area network. But if you kind of zoom in a little bit of what this WAN comprises of, you actually have a multitude of things going on. So you have some transport network elements present which are doing uh, uh, you know, high, high speed uh, digital wrapping and uh, transport of these uh, client signals. So. Uh, in this uh, scenario, as you can see, you have uh, uh, packet traffic at various levels of aggregation. All of this kind of getting muxed into optical or digital wrappers and then uh, trans transported over long haul, uh, you know, thousands of kilometers also. So, the, so if you kind of zoom in particularly about you know, into uh, data center, so, uh, that picture in the previous slide was just a scenario. I mean, that kind of applies not just to data centers, but networks in general also. <coughs> so you have routers connected to another routers over long distances through transport equipments. So in particular, if you zoom into a data center, so you have uh, you know, kind of obvious massive pool of compute and storage. And then you have networks allowing these compute resources and storage uh, resources to be kind of connected with each other. So inside the data center, you have these Know, hundreds of thousands of virtual machines migrating for high availability and uh, inter data center connectivity for delivery, backup, replication, uh, so on and so forth. So kind of that picture is just uh, uh, a little simplified version of the uh, picture in the previous slide. So, uh, so the data center, so as I mentioned, there are multiple things going on. If you just zoom into the packet side of things, uh, what's happening there, so uh, you have intra data center programmability that is what is happening within the data center. Uh, quite a bit of work has been done here. Uh, um, for example, Portland, which was uh, Amin and his group's work at UCSD, uh, VL2, which was an, another work by uh, Microsoft, uh, where kind of, you know, Portland was almost the origin of uh, what we today call as kind of software defined approach. Uh, they actually built something called a fabric manager, which almost is like a centralized controller, which was associating, which was trying to solve the pro problem of a uh, lot of MAC addresses uh, kind of being in flux because of all these virtual machines moving. So they had some hierarchical structure to this lay, uh, flat, otherwise flat L2, where uh, some performance gains were done. So. Uh, and then, of course, with the advent of OpenFlow, you have uh, uh, these commodity Ethernet switches kind of being more easily programmable. Uh, OpenFlow, you know, kind of enabling that. And then um, uh, these data specialized data center boxes are uh, supposed to do all of these, you know, Ethernet bridging, um, switching, and all of these things. Uh, you can uh, uh, actually go ahead and build uh, simple switches, uh, which kind of are composed of these you know 10 gigi ports or you know fiber, ch fiber channel ethernet ports and then open source software stacks are available so you kind of can go ahead and you know switch fabrics and all of those are available now coming to inter data center programmability or kind of programmability across data center locations over the wide area network uh, that has kind of slowly uh, picking up uh, speed so we saw google's b4 uh, swan both of them kind of presented in this year's sitcom um, the packet layers are kind of becoming more and more programmable. In fact, uh, OpenFlow, uh, you know, the, one, one of the motivations was from that, when people were wanting more programmable uh, uh, interfaces to all these packet boxes. Now, 
if we zoom into the inter data center connects th from the transport layer perspective, uh, these transport layers are providing point-to-point uh, -point links for these routers at the edges to speak to each other. Uh, these are high capacity links, typically you know, could be mul uh, multiple hundreds of gigabits of uh, optical capacity. However, if you see uh, the way traditional service providers engineer this today, uh, Every service provider has separate set of people managing their packet side of things compared to the optical or transport side of things. So going from capacity, planning, to engineering, to provisioning, all of them is done uh, separately. And it kind of becomes a step function now. So if I want an L3 VPN or an L2 service to go from one point to another, uh, multiple sets of people now have to program different groups in an organization uh, have to program uh, optical side of things first so that the data plane co connectivity is available for these routers or the L2 boxes to talk to each other. And uh, um, L2, L3 uh, control plane software don't talk to L1 control planes. I mean, uh, I'll go into a little more detail in the next slide. So uh, it is almost static now. So everything has to be done on a per layer basis almost uh, than kind of trying to, to achieve an end-to-end -end solution. And uh, L1 control planes also uh, are, in theory, can speak to each other. But actually, that's a tough problem also, because each of these are now going into specific details. And uh, uh, every vendor probably has their own extensions built in there. Uh, so kind of interop becomes really difficult. The question is, how can we make uh, networks end-to-end -end programmable across all these layers, uh, going over wide area networks, uh, so on? So uh, transport paradigm is a little different. So historically, the way transport networks have worked is uh, uh, it's circuit-oriented or uh, circuit-switched-based setup. Uh, kind of things are static allocation. You know, Pipes are allocated once. They stay there until you manually tear them down. And um, you know, the things are more of you know, the cross-connection paradigm. So you have multiple ingress ports to line-side ports, and then you cross-connect them based on your time slot interchanges or uh, things like that. And uh, control plane for L1 or the transport layer is very new, uh, you know, evolving standards, GMPLS. Uh, but historically, it's been very static. Um, and managed through NMSs and EMSs. So uh, kind of very contrasting if you see the packet side of things. So uh, <coughs> there needs some way, given the amount of data traffic that's going, uh, that you would be able to control all of these end to end. So uh, what we are trying to do with transport SDN is how we can make transport networks software defined, or how can you make a transport layer more programmable? So uh, kind of the architectural approach here is, um, you see the picture here. Uh, you have all these stack of layers. You have the router layers, the, the uh, transport layers, and then you have the DWDM side of things also. Um, so, so, the, so the way to go, go about this is uh, uh, we have to somehow mask the existence of these. From the application's perspective, the two domains or the two uh, end hosts, all they want is they want connectivity guarantees with some QoS and uh, actual sized pipes to send the, trans send, uh, send the data over. So uh, if I can build a virtual overlay of all these layer 3, layer 2, and layer 1 boxes, such that the network looks like just a bunch of nodes connected to each other with providing some connectivity with some uh, QoS guarantees, uh, uh, it makes it more easier for me now to program the network as a fabric uh, instead of on a per element basis, uh, kind of what uh, Amin was mentioning yesterday also. You don't want to log into CLIs and you know, kind of be pro programming these networks on a box or a network element by network element basis. So uh, in that sense, uh, uh, kind of the programmability aspects for L2, L3 is growing. Uh, we have OpenFlow. We have other uh, vendors providing interfaces to allow third party applications to be integrated into the whole suite of network applications. Uh, for the transport layer of things, things are slowly changing. Um, uh, what we are, uh, what we, our attempt was to build uh, some abstraction which represents the transport network <coughs> element, so that you can make that optical cross connections and bandwidth management more programmable. 
So we have something called as a open transport switch. Uh, it's a lightweight virtual switch which represents or abstracts a network element. Uh, so the network element might be uh, having a large amount of resource in it, you know, bandwidth, ports, uh, cross connections between these ports and links going over the uh, network. So uh, what we want to do with this OTS is open up interfaces such that transport network elements become more programmable and provides information to do performance monitoring, fault detection, uh, provisioning, and uh, you know, so on and so forth. So uh, this is a high level overview of how OTS looks like. So uh, you actually have the network element itself, the hardware. And then the OTS abstraction has uh, uh, these three components. We have a management interface. We have a discovery and a control agent there and a provisioning agent. So the provisioning agent is the one which is responsible to do the provisioning side of things. So there may be some controller layer or some other uh, higher level uh, application which is taking care of or having a network-wide visibility. And then it is sending commands or messages to this data plane agent to do the actual data plane programming on the hardware. Uh, also, the uh, uh, the control and or the discovery agent, as we call it here, uh, this is responsible for giving. So, for example, if there was a fiber cut, now I need to the 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 connectivity of the graph might look different now. So, uh, somebody needs to be updating the controller or the controller layer about what changes are happening in the link uh, or the network itself. And then uh, there is a management portion also. So, uh, given the fact that transport network elements, it's not really very easy to have a kind of one abstract view which works for all vendors. There may be some cases where every vendor has his own proprietary ways of you know, exposing things or managing things. So for example, equipment management or facilities. Uh, so that can happen through the management interface. So um, the OTS as a whole, which encompasses all these elements, is uh, now can virtualize the transport hardware itself. So I can have one switch which runs multiple OTS instances. And each of these OTS instances might be instantiated by different vendors. So if you have a large tier 1 service provider who is providing service to a smaller tier 2 service, pro uh, tier two, uh, uh, service provider, uh, these C tier 2 service providers might be interconnected over this large tier 1 uh, backbone. And uh, uh, each of these, for example, OTS instances could manage that portion of the service uh, which is owned by the tier 2 service provider in this case. So if uh, the tier 2 service provider just bought some amount of capacity from a tier 1 service provider, his OTS instance would just be responsible or having a view of his network only. So that's like a slice of the actual hardware resource. Or uh, uh, the picture below is uh, going it, going taking this a little more further, which is instead of on a per element basis, this OTS can pro probably abstract a bunch of network elements together, almost uh, doing a domain level uh, network virtualization. So uh, a use case here is uh, multi-layer optimization. So as I mentioned in the first slide, uh, typical issues, so service providers manage networks differently. Routers have, or the router layers have their own control plane. They run on typical traffic, tra traffic engineering, you know, MPLST, BGPT. Uh, and then you have the transport side of things, which is providing this high-speed high interconnectivity. And there is uh, you know, GMPLS control plane, which is slowly uh, developing for the optical side of things. And optical networks are becoming more intelligent also, you know, doing protection switching, uh, restoration capabilities, all of that being built into the transport layer itself. So multi-layer optimization is uh, an important use case uh, as a consequence of that. So if I want a service end-to-end -end from one point to another point going over this huge layers of uh, networking infrastructure, uh, how can I do the best service provisioning possible? So a typical scenario might probably look like some routers or provider edge routers connecting to their peer provider edge routers through just provider routers or the core routers. Uh, a typical scenario probably might involve 
these packets touching all these routers. Uh, but actually, with multi-layer optimization, if there is a central place where um, all of these information is housed or collected, I can actually do a kind of almost you know the best traffic engineering path to go over these uh, uh, layers. Uh, so kind of the next generation networks have to be programmable end to end, uh, given that packet, in packet optical integration is already taking place in the industry today. So uh, to summarize, uh, uh, some advantages OTS provides is programmability. And uh, there are a few challenges, of course, uh, which Amin also talked about. How do I migrate from a non-SDN traditional approach to an SDN uh, network? Uh, coexistence with control plane. So your, uh, if, if the idea of SDN is to separate data plane and control plane, but sufficient efforts have already gone into building a control plane. So how can both of these coexist? And then uh, how can this be made abstract across uh, uh, multiple vendors? Yeah. Thanks. Questions?